Uh, it's very strange with these pieces of paper that people have so much faith in. If you read them very carefully, they're not promising to give you anything. In re they used to. When I was young, every dollar bill said you could redeem it in silver on demand. Now it just says that it's legal tender for all debts, which means you can't exchange it for anything but more paper. If people lost faith in the paper, the whole system would fall apart. Money in the modern world is just inf pure information. It's as abstract as information in, in, in cybernetic theory. Which brings up the question, how come people get to charge interest on distributing information? <laughs> I divorced myself from the human race a long time ago and from this culture, this nation, because I think the human race has chosen to organize itself poorly. I think we were given great gifts. We were given this supposable thumb, the ability to walk upright, binocular vision, and the mind that could distinguish between the objective and the subjective. And we have been diverted with toys and gizmos from our lives being stolen from us in this country. I found that by divorcing myself emotionally from any interest in a certain outcome, without being a cheerleader for a result, I could detach myself emotionally and be more of an objective writer. For those who think that this is just primarily an angry white male movement, is that if our ancestors would have been armed, they would not have been slaves. That's why people are beginning armed. Not so much with firepower. That's not the thing that makes it dangerous. What makes it dangerous that they're being armed with knowledge? What you're going to see is a growing number of citizens, and you're saying that now, that's why we're here. Move away from the authority that is here and begin to create their own constitutional authority. You're going to begin to see this in the resurgence of the common law courts. The formation of the militias. That's what came first to defend ourselves. Religion is always in the control business, uh, and that's something people don't really understand. It's, it's in the guilt-producing control business, and if you have heaven as a place where you're rewarded for your goodness and hell as a place where you're punished for your evil, then you sort of have control of the population. The church doesn't like for people to grow up because you can't control grown-ups. That's why we talk about being born again. When you're born again, you're still a child. The people don't need to be born again, they need to grow up. They need to accept their responsibility for themselves and the world. This is the, this is the real news about a century. It was highly feasible to take care of all of humanity at a higher standard of living than anybody has ever experienced or dreamt of, to do so without having anybody profit at the expense of another, so everybody can enjoy the whole earth. The scientists have said, it's necessary. The scientists say very clear, you could make the world work and take care of 100% of humanity, the highest standard living than anybody's ever known, despite an increasing population, but you can't do it with the, with the, with the, the barriers any more than you can try to run the human organism with a wall between the air and the eye and the summer. If you look at Monsanto's research agenda, relations of the world. I, I would, I would do it again. I'd like to do it better, differently, smarter. I would certainly do it again. I would certainly want to be part of an emerging revolution again. It was a precious, precious opportunity. I think we came close, I mean, I think the world came close to seeing those major changes, and I think that that makes a difference in terms of the ability of movements for change to emerge in the future. The fact that there's a history of resistance, there's a history of white people's participation in resistance, I think makes a difference too.
there really is no they. I, I, I really believe. I mean, there are obviously they in a temporal sense. There's a, there's a, an arrogant group of people that have maintained power for long periods of time. They continue to do so. But there's, we still support that. There's really only us. And as long as we focus on the they, on a cognitive level, on a psychic level, so to speak, they will always exist. So that's one of the more cataclysmic uh, things that people don't really realize on the fundamental level, that there really is no they. So those, I, I don't advocate activists that can perpetuate this, you know, we have to battle the new world order, or battle this and that. They don't really get it, as far as I'm concerned. is a novelty producing and conserving engine of some sort. We are living in the most empowering age in human history because all of the energy of the ancestors, not only the human ancestors, but our animal, our primate ancestors, all of that energy pours into, is focused into this moment. We are the transition generation. We have one foot in matter and one foot in hyperspace. Why was no one fired? And not only that, let's say the worst scenario is true. And this was a case of like the Rückstag fire of Germany. Well then, shouldn't many important people in this country be going to jail? Well, the United States' ego won't let that happen, will they? They're not about to put their leaders in prison. Because this country will impeach a president for cheating on his wife, but we won't impeach a president for lying to us and taking us to war where thousands are killed. What would we do if we didn't have to work all the time? The answer to the new question, what is human life about? What are we going to do with all this time? Mm. Up until this time, you had to work. We, uh, we now realize that it's, it's an insult for any American citizen mm -hmm. to be forced to do a job that can be done better by a machine. I like, uh, I propose this. I want you to think about yes. this. Let's, let's realize that work is something done by robots. So the new motto becomes, robots work, human beings perform. <laughs>